Hey guys, in the first section we went over HTML5 and CSS3, and in this section I'd like to go over JavaScript. Um, we're going to be using quite a bit of JavaScript through this series, so um, having a basic understanding is essential. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the scripting language of the web, and it always has been really. Um, JavaScript was created by Netscape um, by an individual called Brendan Eich or Eek. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name, but it's a scripting language that runs on the client side. So it doesn't run on the server, it runs on the actual user's computer. Uh, the user has to have JavaScript installed um, from within the, the web browser. Um, doesn't need any special software and again doesn't need a server. And JavaScript is the building blocks for extremely popular libraries like jQuery and Ajax. Um, jQuery is all, it's just all JavaScript underneath. So what can it do? Uh, it can do a lot. Um, some of the most popular things that JavaScript is used for is form validation. So if we want to validate, say, an email, um, or we want to validate, I don't know, a number range or something like that, uh, we can use JavaScript. We could also use a server-side language like PHP, but that puts load on the server and it's slower. Uh, JavaScript can do it really fast and, and really easy. Um, animations, we can create animations, um, even more so using a library like jQuery, uh, fading, sliding, all kinds of, of stuff, of animations. Um, another huge benefit is that it runs asynchronously so what that means is that it can get, it can send and receive data without having the page reloaded. So if you've ever heard of Ajax, that's what it is essentially. Ajax can actually grab data from a database. Um, it can do a lot of different things from a file and it can just load it right where we tell it to without having to reload the page. And JavaScript can communicate with the server. Um, as I said, Ajax can grab data from a database on a server. Um, JavaScript is actually the brains behind pretty much all of the new HTML5 features like Canvas and geolocation. Um, HTML5 makes it possible to display it in the browser, but HTML by itself is just a markup language. It, it's for physical appearance only. Um, it doesn't have any logic. JavaScript provides the logic for these features. Um, search and autocomplete. Uh, we all know, for instance, when you type in Google and you type in a letter, it'll show some suggestions without reloading the page. And that's that's doable because of JavaScript. And it does much more than that. That's just the the popular things, functionality that comes to mind when I think of JavaScript. All right, so here we have a layout of a, an HTML5 document with some JavaScript. All right, so all JavaScript goes in between these tags, all right? We have this opening script tag. Um, this should actually be language JavaScript. All right, so in between the tags, we can do what we want with JavaScript. Um, for instance, here we're creating a function. We're creating a function called change text, and I'll, I'm going to be going over functions in a couple minutes. Uh, basically, we're, call, we're defining a function and defining what we want it to do. All right, and what we want it to do is get an element by an, by its ID, and the element should be named text. So down here in the HTML, you can see we have a paragraph with the ID of text. So we're grabbing that. And then we're calling this inner HTML method. And what that does is just inserts HTML. All right, so we want to insert I live in a green house into the text ID when this function is called. Now, this function isn't called until we click on this button. We have a button and we have the on click, which is an event, a JavaScript event. And when that event is, is triggered, which is basically on the click, it'll call the change text function all right and the change text function again inserts this text so we have this paragraph that says I drive a red car and then we have a button which when we click on 
will change the text to I live in a green house. Um, this is a kind of advanced for a, a first look at JavaScript, um, but it gives you a general idea of how it works. And yeah, so let's move on. Variables. Um, if you have any experience with just about any programming languages, then you probably know what variables are. They're basically a holder or a container for content. And we can declare variables and we can assign content, text, numbers, um, <clears throat> different values to that variable. So in JavaScript, uh, every language has rules about naming variables, naming conventions. In JavaScript, it must begin with a letter, but it can also begin with a dollar sign or an underscore. Now, I wouldn't suggest using these. I'd suggest you, when using JavaScript, you just always start your variables with a letter, okay? And they are case sensitive. Um, if you have a variable that's a uppercase X and then a variable that's a lowercase X, those are two totally different things. So that's important to remember. Um, here we have an example of declaration. Um, if we want to create a variable called X, then we want to write VAR and then X and, that, and then a semicolon. That's another thing in JavaScript. All lines should end with a semicolon. So that's what we're doing here is we're creating the X variable. All right. So we didn't assign anything to it yet. We're just declaring it. Here is where we're assigning. We're saying that X is equal to five. Okay, um, but we don't. We actually, this isn't totally needed. Uh, we could just do x equals five, and that will also declare the x variable. So this here is the exact same as this. All right. Uh, in values, variables can be strings, numbers, booleans, or objects. Uh, strings is basically just a string of text. Numbers are numbers. Booleans are true or false. And objects are a little more complicated, so we'll get into that later. All right, so JavaScript arrays. Arrays are essentially a variable that holds more than one value. Okay, so here's an example. We're creating a, an array called fruits. We're creating an array, but it's also a variable. So variable fruits is equal to a new array. So now fruits is known as an array. It has nothing in it yet. Um, here is where we're going to assign values to it. So arrays st always start at zero. Okay, so we have we can give the fruits zero a value of apple, and fruits one, orange, fruits two, grapes. And this is an index. Okay, zero, one, two, and you just always remember that it always starts at zero. And we can use this to do the same exact thing. This here does the exact same thing as this. It gives us a variable of fruits that's a new array that has apple, orange, grapes. And when we do it this way, automatically, whoops, I didn't want that to happen. Sorry about that. So fruits. Zero, fruit zero here. I'm sorry, capitalizes everything. Fruit zero is still apple, even though we didn't specifically say that fruit zero is apple. Zero is the first value in an array. So fruits one is orange, fruits two is grapes. So both of those lines, both of that, these syntaxes are the exact same. All right, so loops. Yeah, loops are very common in, in just about every programming language and what it does is loops allow you to run a certain block of code over and over until a certain condition is met alright so we have different kinds of loops um, in JavaScript we have for loops, while loops and for in loops now we also have something called a do while loop but I've actually never used a do while loop in my life so it's not they're not it's not really important to learn um, right now so a for loop is usually used to loop through a block of code if you know the number of times that it's going to loop through all right a while loop is used usually when you don't know how many times that it's going to run and then a for in loop is usually specifically um, used to loop through array objects and here we have some loop syntax. 
the for loop, what we do is say for, and then we open parentheses, and we have these three parameters. The first parameter is declaring, there should be a space here, we're declaring i, we're declaring a variable called i that holds zero, the value zero, all right? The next parameter is i less than five. So we're saying that if i is less than five, then run this code, all right? And then the last is we're actually incrementing the i variable. So if it's if i is at zero, it'll go to one. If it's at one, it'll go to two, all right? And it'll run this code as long as i is less than five, okay? And the code basically is just um, writing out this to the screen. Document.write is a, is a method that's used to just write out text to the browser. And what it's gonna write is number, the word number, and then we're concatenating on i, all right? So i is gonna be equal to whatever it is when this is set. So the, fir the first time it runs, since i is equal to zero, uh, it's going to be, it's going to increment to one, all right? And then the next time it runs, i is going to be incremented from one to two, and then it runs two to three, three to four, and, and four will be the last time it runs because we have the condition that i is less than five. Four is the last value that can be less than five. So this is what it actually would print out right here the number, the i variable at that time of the of the or that iteration, and then we we can cat a, a break so that they, they're on different lines. Now if we wanted to say number zero, one, two, three, four, and and five, then we have to put i is less than or equal to five. It's a little tough to understand at first, but um, once you, you look at it a couple times, it's actually pretty simple. Um, so we also have a while loop syntax, and essentially this does the same exact thing as this does. It prints out number zero to four. So what we're doing is we're setting the variable i to zero, just like we did here, and we're saying while i is less than five, while it's less than five, then print, it out on, print that out on the screen, and then increment by one. All right, so the first iteration, um, i is equal to zero and then when it increments it'll be equal to one so it'll come back and it's still less than five because it's one so it'll go through again it'll increment to two and then it's still less than five because it's two then three then four and then when it hits five it's not going to run or four i'm sorry because four is the last value that's less than five all right and again if you want to include the five you can say less than or equal to five all right, so let's get into functions. Functions are pretty easy to understand. It's basically just a block of code that you you can define. All right, so to create a function, all you have to do is write the word function and then the name you want to name the function, and then parentheses, and then opening brackets, closing brackets, and all the code you want to run in that function goes in between the bracket, I'm sorry, not brackets, curly braces. All right, so, and to call the function, all you need to do is write the name of the function and then the parentheses. Now we can also have parameters to a function. Let me just show you an example of that. Let's give it a parameter of text. All right, so this is the parameter, but it's also um, a variable. So down here, we want to replace this static text with the variable text. So now, when this when the person calls the function, they have to have this parameter in, all right? So we have the call down here, and for the parameter, we want to put whatever we want to be assigned to the variable text. So we'll say hello. And it should be a string, which goes in quotes. You notice here, there's no quotes. That's because this is a variable and not a string. So when we call a function with the parameter of hello, this text is going to be replaced with hello. So essentially, it's going to just do document.write hello. All right, and it's going to output hello on the screen. So uh, that's pretty much the gist of, of functions. Um,
but we'll get into that more later on. So next we have objects. Pretty much everything in JavaScript is looked at as an object. Uh, strings, numbers, dates, arrays, uh, they're all considered objects. And objects have properties. Um, for instance, in a hypothetical example, let's say that we have a dog object. All right? So the dog object could have a color property, a breed, pretty much just something that describes it is a property. And down here I have an example. I'm sorry, this shouldn't. All right, <laughs> sorry about that. So we have an example. We have a variable uh, named greeting that holds the string hello. Okay, so the very the string of hello, which is a variable, has a property a that comes with JavaScript by default called length. And the length property, what it does is it describes how many characters. The object has. Okay, so what we're doing here is creating a variable called x that is equal to the length property of the greeting object. So the answer to this, the x is equal to 5 because greeting or hello, it has five letters, five characters. Okay, so um, that's properties. They can also have methods, and methods are actions. So let's say we have a dog object. Bark, for instance, could be a method because it's an action. Now, JavaScript has this has a um, a default method for strings called to uppercase, and what it does is it basically just changes the text to all uppercase. So that's what that function or that method does. Uh, if you hear me say function and method, it's really the same thing. Uh, methods are just usually what functions are called when dealing with object-oriented programming. All right. So that's it for JavaScript. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you didn't already know this stuff, uh, like I said, this is pretty much just a refresher course. Um, so next we will get into JSON, which is JavaScript, uh, JavaScript oriented notation. So I will see you in that section. Thanks.